Hi class, in this video here what we want to do is we want to begin our study of uh, problem solving that involves geometry of some type. Okay, so in this lecture here we're going to use some of the formulas here to help us uh, answer some like application problems. And um, we're going to focus primarily here uh, using the, these formulas for a rectangle and a circle. We have, we're going to do a lot of rectangle problems today actually, we'll do a circle one here. Uh, but, there, but there's some other formulas here for volume. But so basically, let's stick with this one first here to talk about area. So when you have a rectangle, right, this is what a rectangle looks like. The area of a rectangle is length times width. And the perimeter, so what the perimeter is, the perimeter is basically the distance you would walk around the rectangle. It's 2 times the length plus 2 times the w. For a circle who has radius r, the area of that circle is pi times r squared. And the circumference, think about the circumference as the perimeter of the circle, if you want to think about it that way, is equal to 2 times pi times r. All right, let's jump into some, uh, f uh, what I think are, are some fun application problems here. With this. All right, we're going to focus a lot on the rectangle here to start. All right, so here's the first one. If the length of a rectangular fence is 5 meters less than twice the width, and the perimeter is 44 meters long. I want to find the length and width. All right, well, well, there's a lot going on here. Let's write what's given, OK? We know the perimeter, which is equal to 2, 2 times the length plus 2 times the width. is equal to 44 meters. All right, but now what's really interesting is if you look here, this part here, it looks like the length is de, is de, is de, is stated or determined in, in terms of the width. So if you let the length be equal to, so the length of the rectangle is, so is tells me equal, five meters less than twice the width. So twice the width, five meters less. So look, look what I got here. I can't solve this perimeter equation 2L plus 2W is equal to 44 because there's two variables in it. But look, I can replace L with this 2W minus 5. So 2 times the length, but the length is equal to 2 times the width minus 5 plus 2W is equal to 44. Now watch what happens when I go to, to, to try to solve this. Let's distribute. So this is 4W minus 10 plus 2W is equal to 44. Combine like terms, 6w minus 10 is equal to 44. Now look at this. This is just this is just a, a very, very simple um, linear equation, right? So like I add 10 to each side. These are gone. I get 6w is equal to 44 plus 10 gets me 54. And look, when I divide both sides by 6, 54 divided by 6, the width is 9 meters. So we know right off the bat the width is 9 meters. Well, look, now I can actually now solve for the length, right? Because I know w. So this is 2 times 9 minus 5. That's 18 minus 5. That's 13 meters. So look, I found the length and width. The length of this rectangle is equal to 13 meters, and the width is equal to 9 meters. We got it. Let's try this one. All right, find the length and width. Again, I'm looking for the length and width of a rectangular garden. If the perimeter is 152 meters, so the perimeter, which is 2 times the length plus 2 times the width, is 152 meters. And the width is 22 meters less than the length. So look at this. The width is equal to, the width is 22 meters less than the length. So the length minus 22. So now I'm going to plug this in for w. So I get 2 times the length plus 2. Now instead of w, I have length minus 22. Ah, now I'm going to solve this. OK, I got it in terms of one variable here. So this is 2L plus distribute here. 2L, 2 times that is minus 44. 
2L plus 2L gets me 4L minus 44 is equal to 152. So what are you going to do here, right? You're going to add 44 to each side. So this is gone. I'm going to move this over here. So I get 4L is equal to, this ends up being 196. And divide by 4. And you know, it, it, you know, hopefully you see it's 49, but like if you need your calculator here, that's okay. 196 divided by 4 gets me 49. So we see here that the length is 49 meters. And the width is just 49 minus 22. You know, what is that? It's 27, right? Yeah, so look, we got it. We got the length is equal to 49 meters. And the width is equal to 27 meters. We got it. All right, let's do. Uh, let's take a look at a uh, another one here. This one's fun. All right, so we have this 10-inch pizza that's one inch thick, and it requires eight ounces of dough. Okay, how much dough is needed for a 12 inch pizza? That's also one inch thick. So this one inch thick because it's the same doesn't matter. So if you think about a pizza, okay, um, like this, the only thing that's changing, this is a 10 inch, okay? And then over here you see the 12 inch is bigger. What's changing is the area, okay? So let's find the surface area of this. So the area of a 10 inch for a circle, like look, look this look back, the area here of, of the circle is pi times r squared. Well, a 10 inch pizza has a radius of five. So this, this area here is pi times five squared, which is 25 pi. All right, and this is inches squared. And the surface area of this one is equal to pi. Here the radius is 6. So this is 36 pi inches squared. We'll look at this. All right, this pizza right here, how much dough this requires here, all right, we're gonna do. We're gonna use a proportion equation to solve. So twenty, uh, a surface area of twenty-five pi inches squared is gonna require eight ounces of dough. And then what we don't know is how much dough this this twelve this twelve inch pizza is gonna cost. Well, the surface area here is thirty-six pi inches squared over x ounces because we don't know. Now look, we, we, we learned how to solve this, right? So cross multiply. So this is x times 25 pi. I'm gonna leave the units off for now. So this is x times 25 pi, eight times 36 pi. All right, well, let's figure out what eight times 36 is. Get 288. So this is 288. Don't forget the pi. And then when you divide both sides by 25 pi, they just get x by itself. The pi's are going to cancel out. Pi over pi cancels out. And 28 divided by 25, or 288, excuse me, divided by 25. Looks like this is going to require 11.52 ounces of dough. And we got it. All right. Uh, let's do, let's do um, a couple more geometry problems just so we can 
uh, you know, perimeter problems just so we can, you know, make sure we got this, this concept down. Okay, so the perimeter of a rectangle is 80. Okay, so we know perimeter is 2 times the length plus 2 times the width is 80 units, right? One of its side's lengths is 32, okay? What is the, the, the other side length? So one of the sides, doesn't matter length or width here. We'll just say L is equal to 32. So can we find W? Absolutely. This one was a lot easier. You're literally just going to plug it in. So this is 2 times 32 plus 2 times W is equal to 80. This is ends up being 64 plus 2W is equal to 80. When you subtract 64 from each side, hopefully you see you know, it's 16. Mm -hmm. So you get 2w is equal to 16. And when you divide by 2, you get the w, the width here, is just equal to 8. All right, let's try this one. The perimeter of a rectangle is, okay, three times the length of the longer dimension, okay? So it goes on to say is the shorter dimension is 12 units. So I'm gonna let L be the longer side. Doesn't matter if you switch it. The width then is 12 units, okay? So we're gonna let L be the longer side that we don't know. So the perimeter, P, all right, is equal to three times the length of the longer side, so 3L. Well, what's perimeter equal to? It's equal to two times the length plus two times the width. Well, what is the width? So we have 3L is equal to 2L plus two times 12. So I have 3L is equal to 2L plus 24. Check this out. Then when you subtract 2L from each side, look at this. You get the length is equal to 24. All right, so now you have to figure out, here, here's what's really interesting. It asks you what is the perimeter. Well, the perimeter is equal to 2 times the length plus 2 times the width, or 3L, it doesn't matter here. But So this is 2 times L, which is 24 plus two times the width, which is 12. So two times 24 is 48, plus 24. That should be 72, but you know, let's confirm that. We got it. So the perimeter is what they ask for. So you gotta be careful what they're asking for, right? The perimeter here is 72 units. All right, this next one's really fun. Really, really, really interesting. Different type of perimeter problem, okay? The perimeter of a rectangle. Okay, so just remember, the perimeter is equal to two times the length plus two times the width. The perimeter of a rectangle is 25 less than three times the sum of its dimensions, okay? So the sum of the dimensions just so we're clear what that is, that's just the length plus the width. So the perimeter is 25 less than three times that. So, so three times L plus W minus 25 is equal to two times the length plus two times the width. Now we wanna find the rectangle's perimeter. Hmm, this is really weird, like how do we do this? This is gonna be really fun. Watch this. Do you notice how these both have a two in it? Let me let me factor out the two. Check this out. Look, I have three of it, three of it over here, two of it over here. So let me subtract. This is gonna go away. So when I subtract that, I'm just equal to zero. 
three length times width minus two times length times width is just one length times width. Let me move this to the other side. So I'm going to add 25 to each side. Check this out. I have the length plus the width is equal to 25. Well, if the perimeter is 2 times the length plus 2 times the width, which is the same thing as 2 times the length plus the width, well, if I know that length plus width is 25, wow, look at that. I was able to figure out that the perimeter is 50 units, whatever the units are. So this one was fun. It was just like a, a little bit of tricky algebra. You know, it didn't seem like you were given enough information, but you absolutely were to, to figure this out. All right, let's let's end on just this one interesting problem. Um, and then we'll, uh, 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 this will be the last one we do. So this is a little bit of history. So there was this oil oil rig um, called Deepwater Horizon. They actually made a movie out of it. Uh, this this accident, I think, starring Mark Wahlberg. A um, little bit of random history. Anyways, the Deepwater Horizon oil spill resulted in 4.9 million barrels of oil. Wow, spilling into the Gulf of Mexico. Mexico. Each barrel of oil can be processed into 19 gallons of gasoline. Okay. How many cars could this have fueled for a year? Okay. And let's assume that uh, an average car gets 20 miles to the gallon and drives about 12,000 miles a year. All right, well, let's first figure out how many gallons of gasoline, total gasoline was spilled into the ocean. Well, there were 4.9 barrels, so I'm gonna write it like this. 4.9 million barrels, and each barrel gets 19 gallons. So this is crazy. Wow, look at this. They're literally, literally here, okay, you gotta be careful here. It was 93,100,000 gallons. Okay, we're spilled. All right, well, so if a car drives 12,000 miles a year and it gets 20 miles per gallon, how many gallons does a car use per year? Well, it's going to drive 12,000 miles and it's getting 20 miles per gallon. So on average, what we're saying here is a, a car uses 600 gallons of gas a year. Wow. Well, to figure out how many cars now this could, well, these are the total gallons. This is how much a, a car uses. So how many cars, all right, could this have fueled? A lot of waste you'll see. You're gonna take the total gallons that were dumped into the, uh, that spilled, not dumped, spilled into the ocean, divided by how much a car uses. So 93,100,000. Wow, I'm gonna round this up. Okay, very very sad for the for a year. It could have it could that the wasted oil the spill yeesh, it could have fueled one hundred and fifty five thousand one hundred and sixty seven cars. Wow. Crazy. All right, class, in other words, there was a lot to digest in here and there was some interesting problems worked, you know, um, but I hope this lecture helped. And as always, I'm, I'm here for any questions you have.